Yo, what's up, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. We've had a ton of content to drop today. Fourth video of the day, wrapping it up with my top 20 tight end rankings. Getting ready for week 13 of the NFL season. No Thursday night game this week, which is a little bit weird, but not, you know, something that we, you know, expected coming into the week. Uh, but things are going to get a lot different throughout the week. I mean, we've got two Monday night matchups. We've got a Tuesday night matchup. Starting in a couple of weeks, we're going to have Saturday matchups again. And then, of course, the end of the season just around the corner. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Let's talk about my top 20 tight end rankings here in week 13. And to kick it off at number 20, Mr. Trey Burton. Man, if Trey Burton was the only tight end that was there right now or healthy right now, we would have him as a start every single week. They are just peppering the tight end position in that offense right now, which is awesome, which is great. But the problem is, is they're using three tight ends to basically chop up that uh, chop up that volume evenly. And, you know, that's great. Absolutely love it. I love watching tight ends score. That was weird. But anyway, Trey Burton would love to see him out there. It's just hard to call him a start. You have to hope for a touchdown every single week. But then you got, you know, like last week, uh, you know, Trey Burton gets the score. The week before that, you see Jack Doyle get a score. Mo Alley Cox is still being used quite a bit. So that's why I'm uncomfortable using Trey Burton, listing him as a start weekly. And number 19, Jordan Reed. I, I like Jordan Reed as well. A dude could get uh, quite a bit of targets. But this week, we do have both Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel back. And of course, this, this offense loves to run the football. So that takes away from Jordan Reed a little bit as well. Noah Fant at number 18. The biggest thing here is who for sure is going to be the quarterback. There, I, I, At this point, there could still be a suspension. There could still be um, some sort of an issue. It does, in fact, look like like Drew Locke may end up playing. If Drew Locke is the guy, if they announce, yes, Drew Locke, 100%, he is going to be the guy this week, then Noah Fant will get a bump up for me, 100%. No, If Drew Locke is the guy this week, then we will definitely move him up more along the lines of probably a top 12 tight end, probably right up in front of Kyle Rudolph or potentially even up in front of uh, Austin Hooper right there. So it, 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 it's just something where we have to be careful, okay? Okay, it's just something where we have to be careful this week. But again, we could move forward with Noah Fant if we find out for sure. You know, the fine came down for Drew Locke, uh, you know, but what if they decide not to play him this week? Or what if they, you know, say we're going to suspend somebody for a quarter and play this guy? So, you know, that's that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Um, but we'll keep an eye on the situation. Number 17, Jimmy Graham. With Jimmy Graham this week, uh, it kind of good news, not good news, obviously, when somebody's here, but uh, Darnell Mooney. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to end up playing this week. Um, that that helps Anthony Miller out a little bit. And my wide receiver uh, start and sit analysis, I had Anthony Miller as a sit and Mooney as a start. I'll be switching that up just a little bit in FYI there. Uh, but Jimmy Graham's still going to be a sit for me this week. Uh, you know, Detroit's still very, very banged up. You know, it's a good... Uh, it's a good chance that the Chicago Bears will probably get out in front of them early, uh, and they might be running the ball a little bit more than uh, what we would expect. So Jimmy Graham is not going to be a start for me this week. Zach Ertz is not going to be a start for me quite yet, but it does look like Zach Ertz will be back this week. So what do we do with him and Dallas Goddard? Well, right now, I got to see Zach Ertz uh, healthy. I got to see him healthy. I got to see him on the field, all of these things, okay? So let's let's go ahead and pause this week. Now, if you have a team that has no other options whatsoever, you could end up going that route if you want to, okay? Just expect very low upside and maybe don't expect him to get ran out there that often, okay? That's what we need to be careful of this week. Jordan Aikens at number 15. I do have him listed as a start. No Will Fuller means Kiki QT is going to have to move to the outside a little bit more to play, meaning Jordan Aikens, who is six in snap percentage out in the slot among tight ends, could get a little bit more looks out in the slot. And he's been a guy who in the past has had some good games. I expect to see the same thing this week. Anthony Ferkser from the Tennessee Titans. There's no Jonu Smith this week. The last time John U. Smith missed a week, Ferkser had nine targets, eight receptions, and 113 yards, and he added a touchdown to go with it. He absolutely balled out. Now, another option, too, this week would be Jeff Swain, who is also there in Tennessee. 
I don't know if I'm quite on board with Swaim as being a guy. He did get three targets last week and 30 yards, um, but he hasn't really played a whole lot this year. He has two games. He basically has four games in which he's registered a target. Two of those games, he had one target. Two of those games, he had three targets. So Ferkser is my guy that's going to end up being the one to really take the load away from what Jonu Smith was doing. And now, John Smith hasn't been doing a whole lot over the last few weeks. He didn't even get a target last week. Obviously, it looks like he was banged up a little bit, and that's probably something to do with it. Uh, so for this week, I will turn my attention to Anthony Ferkser. He is a start for me now that there is no Janu Smith. So again, Anthony Ferkser is now a start for me because there is no Janu Smith. And number 13, Logan Thomas. You got to hope for that touchdown, right? If that touchdown comes, that is absolutely what we are looking for from Logan Thomas. And it's it's kind of cool how they're using Logan Thomas right now as well. Um, they're doing some direct snaps with him. He's throwing the ball. He's running the ball. Obviously playing tight end. Can do a little bit of everything. But over uh, in the last six games, and four of those games, he's had, he's had at least 60 yards or a touchdown in four of the last six. So still a guy that not a whole lot of upside has been uh, you know kind of consistent in a weird way for us. So and Logan Thomas barely missing the top 12 there. Kyle Rudolph at number 12. I do think he sees a, a decent amount of volume again this week. A really good week last week with no Adam Thielen. There will be no Irv Smith Jr. again, but Adam Thielen will be coming back. That limits Kyle Rudolph a little bit. At number 11, Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper just barely missed that touchdown, man. Austin Hooper, he is a guy that I that I did not like coming into the season, obviously. Uh, And then a couple of weeks ago, absolutely loved him against Philadelphia. Didn't really turn out, but he just barely missed that TD reception. Last week, he doesn't do a whole lot, but he does get the touchdown reception. So the hope is, is that we go back to seeing what we kind of saw before he had that emergency appendectomy. Like right before he had that emergency appendectomy in week four, five, and six, he had seven, 10, and 16 targets, and he had five receptions in all three of those games. That is what I hope is coming at some point in time, and going up against Tennessee could be the right time for that to start turning around. So keep your fingers crossed. If you've got Austin Hooper this week, you know, just keep in mind that is definitely a risk, but every single tight end on this roster basically or on this uh, season has risks in some way, shape, or form. Moving over to the top 10 tight ends, I did have Eric Ebron as a sit in my start and sit video. It's just hard for me to trust Eric Ebron when he's got three wide receivers around him that just are are taking away so much potential volume. But over the last two weeks, and part of the reason that I had him, you know, listed as a sit was because I was still waiting on that game that was happening on Wednesday. But over the last two weeks, he has seven targets and then 11 targets last week. It's hard to walk away from that right now. So even though I'm not loving Eric Ebron because of how much offense is getting pushed towards those uh, those wide receivers, that core group of three that they have that are playing so well, it's hard to walk away from 18 targets over the last two weeks. I mean, he had 12 targets between weeks 9 and 10. So that volume is happening a little bit. But this continues to be the concern for me. Okay, And this is why I've been listing him as a sit. Six targets, but only three receptions. Six targets, but only two receptions. Seven targets, only four receptions. 11 targets, only seven receptions. His catch percentage, 50, 33, 57, 63. Last week, if you watched that game, he dropped a touchdown, and he had two other horrible, horrible drops as well. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, you're used to watching that, He did it in Detroit all the time. That is why he is a concern for me is those drops, man. And I'll tell you what, you can't really blame it on Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger is putting the money or putting the ball right on the money for these guys and they've got some awful drops. It's not Roethlisberger not being able to hit his target. It's not it's not a target that went up and awry or anything like that. These are targets that are going right to Eric Ebron that are being dropped. If you play him, you just got to hope that he catches everything that's coming towards him and he limits those drops. Mike Gusecki at number nine. If you've got Ryan Fitzpatrick starting, which it looks like he will again, then you've got Mike Gusecki starting. The upside between him and Devontae Parker with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback is just far too much to ignore. Hayden Hurst at number eight. 
it does look like now that Julio Jones will end up playing. Now, where where will he be in that? Okay, in that offense, if he does play, how how much how much snaps does he get? Okay, how much is he on the field? How many targets does he get? My hope with Hayden Hurst is that he still gets around the eight-ish targets that we saw in Week 12. And it's a little bit of a blip on the radar. Back in week 11, looked like just a smash start against New Orleans, right? He had two targets, no receptions, and no yards. But the three previous weeks before that, 8, 7, 62, 7, 5, and 54, 7, 6, and 68. So he's a guy that was getting volume, seven targets, seven targets, eight targets. That week 11 performance against New Orleans with only two, and then back to eight targets last week, and now we get New Orleans again. I'm going to bet that Atlanta is a little bit smarter this week, knowing that New Orleans doesn't have a great time stopping tight ends. They get him much more involved this week, and he bounces back. Dallas Goddard at number seven. Would love to have him higher, but again, with uh, with Zach Ertz coming back, that's a concern. You know, over the last three weeks, weeks 10, 11, and 12, you know, Goddard came back for week eight. And at that point, I said, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's give him a couple of weeks. I don't see too much happening this week. And then we get a bye week. And then we go back to Goddard at that point. He went 1 1 and 15 in week eight. Week nine, they have their bye week. And then week 10, six targets. Weeks 11, six targets. Week 12, 10 targets. So 6 4, 33 in week 10, 6 5 and 77 with a touchdown in week 11, 10 7, 75 and a touchdown last week. Definitely he is performing. Hopefully he can get that score for us again this week. Robert Tunyon at number six. I, I, I can't believe that he hit, has basically stayed alive with fantasy relevance. With the way Devontae Adams is playing, with the way they use the running backs, having Alan Lazard back. All of these things combined, I am just flabbergasted that Robert Tunyon is still getting looks, considering the fact that Aaron Rodgers hasn't utilized the tight end position in years. I mean, Jimmy Graham wasn't even utilized in Green Bay. But over the last couple of weeks, 5'5", 41 with a touchdown, 5'5", 67 with a touchdown. If you play Robert Tunyon, just keep in mind, his floor is devastatingly low. Like the 115 we saw against San Francisco back in week nine. Like the 4325, the 2232. Like those weeks that we have seen. I mean, that game against Jacksonville, even in week 10, 4 3 and 33. Okay. Yeah, he's got good upside because of the offense he plays in and because Aaron Rodgers is his quarterback. But the floor is devastatingly low. If you play Robert Tunyon, you have to be ready to potentially take. Five or less points in any given week for half PPR formats. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Philadelphia is a really good matchup for him. That's why I got him up here. But Robert Tunyon could burn the crap out of you this week. At number four and number five, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram. It's crazy to think that just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago even, that both of these guys were basically written off, okay? Now, you know me, you know me, I'm not giving up on these guys right away. You know, I listed them as sits, you know, every once in a while, but I told you, right? I told you, Evan Ingram, the volume's been there at times. If it comes back, we're good. I told you with Hunter Henry, the volume has been there. If he can start scoring a little bit more often, then we're good. And look what's happened to both of them over the last few weeks. Evan Ingram, that volume starting back in week seven, nine targets, 10 targets, 10 targets, a week 10 blip against Philadelphia, only three targets, two receptions. And then last week against Cincinnati bounces back with nine targets, six receptions for 129 yards, his first 100-yard receiving game of the season. For, uh, For Evan Ingram, you know, might be a little bit limited this week. I mean, obviously they're in Seattle. You've got Jamal Adams that can move around with the tight end if they want to. Uh, you've got some very athletic linebackers there that can move around with the tight end if they want to. But it's hard to ignore the fact that the dude has almost 40 targets over the course of four of his last five games combined. Hunter Henry at number four. Hunter Henry is a dude that just has come back out of nowhere. You know, he was one of my must-have tight ends to begin the season. 
I, I love Hunter Henry. The, the problem has always been him staying healthy, and he's finally staying healthy, and that's what we've been wanting to see since week 10. He is the tight end three. He's got touchdowns in week 10 and 11. He's got 10 targets, seven receptions, 67 yards last week against Buffalo. Uh, every other matchup right now, it seems like he's getting eight to seven targets. Just rolling through every single week, eight, eight, seven, and then four. Eight and seven, then four. Seven, six, seven, ten. I told you, the volume has always been there for Hunter Henry. If he started scoring, that is when this dude's upside continued to bust out. A lot of people very, didn't really like playing him. They said, you know what, this guy isn't really doing anything. But if you look at his numbers compared to some of the other numbers this year, they're right in line with everybody else. It's just been, can he score? Can a few more catches come his way? Can he break up a couple of more uh, big plays to start the season? His yards per reception were 14, 13, 10, and 19. And then all of a sudden in week five through week 10, they disappeared. Five, seven, eight, eight, seven. And then the last couple of weeks back to 12 and nine, 9.57. So we're almost back up to 10 there. So the big plays, the touchdowns, they're starting to come back. That what's, that's what makes Hunter Henry so good. And number three, TJ Hawkinson, you know, not much else to say about the guy. Uh, you know, if you've got no Kenny Galladay, which you don't this week, and if you've got no DeAndre Swift, which he is questionable, going to be a game time decision to see if he can clear concussion protocol, then Hunter Henry is a guy, or excuse me, TJ Hawkinson is a guy um, that should get peppered with a lot of targets. Now, the one thing I will say, and I know a lot of you out there feel like I'm a TJ Hawkinson hater, and I am not. I hate the Lions because the Lions are idiots. TJ Hawkinson was my number one tight end in that draft. I absolutely love this kid. But number one, tight ends take some time when they reach the NFL. And number two, if you don't utilize them correctly, they're not going to put up decent numbers. Daryl Bevel the other day said that the hope is the rest of the season, they speed this offense up and they start moving at a better pace on offense. If that happens, that is absolutely excellent for TJ Hawkinson because he's such a matchup nightmare having to face some of these linebackers or having to face maybe a slot corner or a safety has to come up. You know, some of these cornerbacks, they can keep up with those pace, but then when you have to face some of these linebackers or some of these slot corners or some of these safeties that aren't really used to being in coverage 100% of the time or being man-to-man 100% of the time, they can get gassed a little bit, and that can allow TJ Hawkinson to see a lot more big plays, a lot more upside. I'm excited for that. I hope... Hope, hope, hope TJ Hawkinson can end the season strong so whoever the next head coach coming in is sees what kind of a weapon he is and utilizes him in that fashion. And then, of course, at number one and number two, Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller. These two don't leave those spots. That's where they absolutely belong. Darren Waller, hopefully a bounce back this week. I think he will. He'll be just fine. A little blip on the radar last week and a great matchup, but that team was an entire mess last week. It just wasn't Darren Waller. It was Derek Carr. It was wide receivers. It was the defense. It was everybody. And then, of course, Travis Kelsey. The dude's got more volume than my hair. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Top 20 tight ends for week 13. Biggest takeaway from this is we're keeping an eye on Noah Fant. That, that's the thing. Like I, I want to make sure 100% Drew Locke is the guy starting on Sunday. Looking through all the reports, there is nothing that specifically says that as of now. So we'll keep an eye on that. If Drew Locke starts, we'll get Noah Fant back in there ready to go. But that is the one thing to keep an eye on moving forward. Headliner Nation, appreciate you tuning in to this video. Do me a favor. Go down below and hit that like button. And also leave a comment if you've got a question about anybody. And of course course if you're new here to the fancy headliners hit that subscribe button and become a part of headliner nation today appreciate it everybody thanks so much for tuning in stay safe stay healthy and i'll catch you on the next episode of the fantasy headliners